Good morning, everybody. Except it's not morning, it's evening. It's been a crazy busy day, as most of you guys know that watched my video yesterday. My back's been out, I haven't been feeling real well, but today was a good day, productive day, and trying to get caught up on all the stuff I didn't feel like doing over the weekend. Um, Mama Badger went to bed at 5 a.m. this morning. Well, she fell asleep on the couch at 5 a.m., slept for like three or four hours, and then was back up working on the website. We're trying to get all this 501c3 stuff done and ready by February 1st. That's our goal. So um, we are jamming to get it all done. Today's video is going to be on frequently asked questions. So most of you guys know I'm kind of a fan of the Harley Davidson Fat Boy. I think I have four of them in this garage right now. And uh, so knowing that I get a lot of questions about my Fat Boys and about Harley Davidsons in general. And first off, let me say this. I am not a mechanic. I am not trained as a Harley mechanic. I, everything that I've done is basically trial and error. I am self-taught. I was an automotive mechanic and that was 30 fucking years ago. So um, take what I say with a grain of salt. This is just the things that have worked for me and that I know. Um, but a lot of the questions I see um, and I try to answer for people, um, I thought I would cover tonight. So one of the big questions I get is, how do I know if my bike is, is tuned or has a tuner on it? Because it looks like they've replaced my air intake and they've replaced my exhaust. But I don't know whether they've replaced my cams. Well, honestly, the only true way to tell what cams have been put into your bike is to take the little cover off of the side and uh, pull that apart and take a look. Uh, I mean, if you're, if you're experienced enough, you can probably listen to it and go, well, that's got a cam in it. You're still not going to know what cam's in it. Um, secondly, on these older, um, you know, early 2000s I think it's like basically 2000 to like I think it's 2007 when they changed the timing chain tensioners um, those were an issue they basically had a, a plastic shoe and I did a video where I changed mine I don't think I kept the plastic shoes though but anyway they have a plastic shoe um, that is spring-loaded that holds tension on your timing chain um, there's one in the front and there's one in the back uh, those wear out um, and if you look at the owner's manual they're basically a wear item you're supposed to check those um, during regular maintenance I think the first time to check it is like 20,000 miles uh, the ones I just replaced were at 32,000 miles um, I've seen them bad at 20,000 miles so that is a very important piece if you own one of those year models twin cam um, and it doesn't matter which one because I've got the 103 and the 88 um, you have those shoes and those shoes are very important to check because if they come apart they can do a shit ton of damage inside your motor um, there have been many many people that will tell you the story that they destroyed their motor because they didn't replace those little plastic shoes so very important have those checked have those changed on a regular basis if you don't want to change them all the time, so they make a Screaming Eagle kit uh, that lets you change it over to hydraulic. Um, and then you can also do gear drive. My silver bike and mama's bike both have gear drive. You know, it's a set it and forget it type of situation. So we went with the gear drive. It's also considerably more expensive, but if you ride as many miles as we do, we didn't want to change them every 20, 25,000 miles because that would be every year. I would literally have to change my timing chain tensioners every year. Um, I don't have to do that with the gear drive, hence the gear drive. Uh, another way to tell if your bike ha is tuned or has a tuner on it, uh, a lot of the old style tuners are like this. Cable, tuning box, and this stays in place on your bike. So this plugs into um, your computer and then this hangs out underneath your seat somewhere. Um, if you have one of these, then you do have a tuner. This is married to whatever bike it was plugged into. Um, if you do not have a box like that, the other possibility is what I currently use. And that is this. This is a tuner that plugs in, basically downloads the tune, and then you unplug it and it doesn't stay on the bike. I like this 
way more than I like this because this gets in the way. There's not a whole lot of room under a fat boy seat anyway. So if you add that piece to it, it's just one more thing. I had issues with it getting smashed. I had issues with it getting wet. I had issues with it getting hot. Um, like I was riding through Naples and the bike just shut down. Let it cool down, ran for a while, shut down again. Took it to the shop, we moved it around, changed the airflow and that helped, but it, it was just getting hot. So that is another way um, to tell about the tuner. Uh, a lot of times, fat boys don't have saddlebags on them, but a lot of times the tuner will come with the bike. Um, if the tuner doesn't, then you're basically screwed. You're gonna have to buy another tuner. Um, you can take it to a shop, have them tune it, uh, that's fine, but if you ever want to change the tune, you got to go back to the shop, have them retune it, or you can get you one of these, and then there's all kinds of possibilities from tuning it yourself to having them build you a download and um, tuning it that way to an auto tune, which is what I did on Silver. Uh, basically, uh, I got the O2 sensors to plug into my exhaust plug that in and then I can do an auto tune on it. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about tuning your bike. Just depends on how hands on you want to be um, or ha how hands off you want to be. I'm always asked about oils. So um, for years and years, I ran basically this 2050 oil in all three holes. This bike, silver right here, it has 165,000 miles on the transmission and it's always ran 2050 motorcycle oil in it. Um, the engines, the same way. Um, and I did change um, the primary out. So they make primary fluid from AMSOIL. So I decided to switch it to, prime, to primary fluid. I honestly don't know if that's any better than the 2050 motor oil, but it was made for the primary, so I bought it and I put it in there. But I've ran 2050 for 100,000 miles with no issues. So either way, uh, but everybody's like, what is the best oil? Guys, they're all really similar. If you set them down under a microscope, they're, they're just all so super similar. So whatever you want to run. Um, whatever flavor you like, convenient, right? So what can you get your hands on easy? That's why I have Amsoil, because they ship it right to my house. Um, I don't have to go anywhere to get it. I just place my order online, it shows up at my front door, and I don't have to worry about it being in stock or, or any of that. That's why. It's a convenience thing. So whatever's convenient for you. Um, Tires. I get asked a lot about tires. Guys, there are lots of great tires out there. Um, you really kind of have to get a feel for what works for you. I can tell you what works for me. I hate the Dunlops. I've had one come apart, one had cracks in it, and they wear out really fast. Um, the grip is good though. Um, Michelin Commander 2s. Uh, they last forever, but they have a center strip that is dual compound, it's a harder rubber, and I found on um, rain, rain soaked roads that uh, I slid around a lot with those tires, I didn't like them. Personally, I like the Metzlers, the 888 or the Cruise Tex. that's what we have on all of our bikes. We get good mileage, it performs well in all the weather types, and uh, they're reasonably inexpensive. So again, that's a personal preference, buy a tire, run it for a while, change up, do that two or three times, figure out what tires fill and fit the best for you, and then stick with that tire. That's what I've done. Um, Dunlops, Michelins, Avons, um, I've tried all of them uh, before I made my decision of what tire I actually liked. Because the truth of the matter is, there. if you ask the question on the internet, you're gonna get a thousand different answers, and none of those answers are probably wrong. Um, because that is what that person has tried, believes, has seen, has heard. So you really have to make that decision for yourself. So go out, pick three or four different tires, and then when you replace them the next time, switch tire brands and then figure out what works for you. And you'll probably find that whatever tire works for you on that bike will probably continue to be your preferred tire brand on whatever bike 
that you run. Anyway, guys, that's just a couple of questions. Uh, I've got a few more, so I'll do another video like this. Let me know if this was helpful at all. If it was not helpful, let me know, um, and uh, maybe I won't do another one. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great night. We will see you tomorrow.